Hello everyone, I'm RecB5. And I am Sandman99. And welcome back to Fallout 4 G9-13 playthrough. Yes. And while we were off camera after the last episode, I did spend some time running around in the Commonwealth, and I actually did establish a couple more supply lines from Coastal Cottage and the Kingsport Lighthouse to Red Rock at Far Harbor. Nice. Which is now starting to grow. Yeah, they've got six people now. Yep. So I'm going to be able to go back there and send a supplier this way. And I actually had to send a supply line out here to Dalton Farm because after uh, doing that radiant quest for Cassie Dalton, apparently, she planted a couple of Daltons out here <laughs> and, and basically gave the farm to me. So I didn't know it, but I actually had an, an, a, a settlement with people established here. Nice. And so when I arrived back in Far Harbor after my little tour of the Commonwealth, maintaining settlements and, you know, rescuing hapless settlers from kidnappings and that kind of thing, um, I got a message saying that there was a, a settlement under attack over here, so I had to come rushing over here. So what I did is when I got back, I had an extra guy at Longfellow's cabin, so I outfitted a, a, a provisioner and sent him this way. Yep. And then I rushed over here to help them fight off the uh, super mutants that were attacking the place. After, wow, damn. After which I uh, uh, scrapped everything that I could scrap. And I found with scrap everything, there's actually a couple of uh, strange, unscrappable uh, terrain features that show a gap underneath them. You know, like between this surface here. So what I did was I just inserted some handy uh, concrete blocks into those areas. To, you know, like fill up those little holes in the world, right? Yep. And so I'm going to basically use these concrete blocks as the foundations for uh, buildings that I will use to house settlers and put power up on top of and gun turrets and all that kind of good stuff. And you can see uh, this is not that big of a settlement because the you can kind of follow the, the uh, order of the settlement by the lights, right? So this yep. is like a medium-sized settlement, I suppose. But this settlement does have a lot of room uh, down here by the beach. But for some odd reason, there is one ra very radioactive area down here. And I have not been able to find what the cause of it is. Right? It's just randomly it's radioactive. It's just randomly radioactive, like really radioactive. You right? might think about just walling this entire area off and filling it in with concrete. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, kind of like Chernobyl, right? Yeah, kind of like Chernobyl. <laughs> you know what? If it's good enough for the Soviets, it's good enough for you. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, like I've got an unassigned settler here that I'll probably assign to guard duty eventually. And uh, I've also got another settler that I assigned to farming. Oh, I missed a pile of leaves there. And I built a little shack that I could fit two beds in for our, our settlers to sleep in. For the time being and I figured that I would probably uh, you know just use some chain link fence to fence off a sizable portion of this place probably not all the way out there because again this is much more farmland than what we'll ever be able to use yep so I was thinking about maybe going from the corner of this foundation over this way to try and kind of avoid the radioactivity. It looks like if I fence off a line kind of in line with this... You'll then, be free of it. Then yeah. then I'll be free of it. And I mean, you know, like I watched that settler actually fall down a couple of times because he's standing out there right in the middle of the most radioactive part of the whole area, right? Yep, yep. And he was already sitting down after taking a beating from those super mutants too. So anyway, and of course I put my water fountain in there. So anyways, I guess we'll get started on uh, building a building, because it's getting to be nighttime out, and I'm going to have to have a place to sleep before too long, too. Yep. So I guess we'll uh, just build building number one here. Even got yourself a little entryway there. Yep. And uh, then I guess we'll 
We'll build a bed in here. Because this will be like a general uh, barracks area again, I think. Because then I can just jump in that bed and sleep when the mood eventually takes me to. Okay, now what can we do here? Okay, well, we can... Uh, we can do what we do to uh, preserve some... Uh, some uh, floor space, right? By just putting the uh, stairs on the outside. Yeah, and then you can have a second level of barracks. And then I can have a second level here. we'll have to stare up through this area yeah I think we'll probably do it over here though because those stairs will actually partly block off the entryway if I uh, don't do that and it's not like I don't have lots of uh, you know like space to build a whole bunch of smaller buildings like at uh, in some settlements I'll build one large building right yep but here I think I'm going to probably go with a whole series of smaller buildings and then of course here doing this little trick like this will uh, allow me to mm, come on turn around yeah. there see because even one of our viewers gave me heck once here recently for uh, not turning stuff around the right way. <laughs> so, so there. We're going to turn stuff around the right way. Are you really? Well, as far as you know. Okay. I, I think I already see a couple of things not turned the right way, but I'm not saying anything. <laughs> okay, so we can put a nice like a windmill up here on this nice high vantage point and a couple of gun turrets to shoot down at anything that comes in here. Yep. And uh, this one will probably accommodate, oh, a dozen beds or so, maybe. On two levels, kind of, because we can probably sneak a bed in there, too. Yep. And, uh... That way... Yeah, we could have a bunch of beds on the ground floor there as well. One thing I noticed is that about the settlements in Far Harbor, they generally seem to give you a bigger build area than the uh, some of the vanilla ones did, right? Like, you'll notice that my size meter there is still right near the bottom. Yep. But anyway, we'll put in a, a, a windmill-type generator here. Even though I already explained at length why windmill type generators are not practical in the last episode. <laughs> but anyway. But I like them here. Because I think they're cool. Yeah, well I imagine that uh, it's a little difficult to uh, refine uh, petroleum in the uh, post-apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea where, where uh, the fuel for all of these, uh, you know... I'm assuming gas generation, jet gas powered generators comes from. You know, maybe they're distilling alcohol to burn in them or something. There you go. See, that's what all the corn is for. That's what all the corn is for. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know what? There, there are, you know, like there are uh, uh, vehicles that have been built that will uh, take, you know, like I think E80. Or E85 is uh, one of them. Actually, my own truck, even though I can't buy E85 fuel anywhere in Alberta because nobody sells it. Yep. Uh, my truck, actually, in the owner's manual, it even says that it rec they recommend that you use E85 fuel, right? Like 85% ethanol fuel. Performance reasons? Uh, I don't know why they say that. They just said that. I remember reading that in the owner's manual. Ah. Uh. And, uh... This was this vehicle was old. It was built in two thousand and seven. So, 
you know like it's not like it's new technology or anything and i don't understand why with all of these green or so-called green movements that are going on why aren't they having a whole bunch of these farmers who are growing harmful tobacco switching over to growing something that's suitable for uh making alcohol-based fuels well but if we got rid of the tobacco then uh how would you get your smokes yeah, well, for me that doesn't really that, that doesn't really matter since I don't smoke, so I don't really care. <laughs> uh. But uh, you know, like I was just doing that as a a for example yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. right? You know, like it's it's obviously been practical, or at least possible, to make and and you know what? I don't see that as being any more impractical than expecting a bunch of windmills to keep working in below zero conditions in southern alberta like i really you know well i couldn't tell you why uh because uh you know obviously they don't really sell ethanol based fuels here right so no i mean i think you can get it some places in the states but uh you can't get it here I mean, who knows maybe there's a weather or temperature reason for that i don't know i mean it's alcohol i mean when you uh put gas line de-icer into your uh fuel tank in the winter time if you get a little bit of you know like condensation in your in your fuel lines and stuff um that's that's basically a type of alcohol yeah <laughs> right that you're putting in your fuel lines so i wouldn't think that it would be a problem in the winter time well and, there you go you can be our number one hydroponics uh underground hydroponics advocate oh will mass build hydroponic farms of, well, of hey. corn in underground concrete buildings and will uh, irrigate it from uh, water from the North Saskatchewan. Well, you know what? I'm not so sure you'd even need to go to that, those lengths because they are growing uh, uh, pot in a huge greenhouse a few miles south of the city here, right? So, and it's, it's like a government-funded grow operation yeah. <laughs> because, of course, it's legal here. You can go and buy it at stores just like you would go and buy a case of beer in a yep, store yep, or whatever, yep. right? Well, there you go. You could replace know? all the pot with corn. There you go. See, we get to keep our tobacco and we get ethanol fuel. <laughs> Perfect compromise. Well, anyway, I mean, we're just talking silly here, but just the same, though. It makes me scratch my head sometimes, the reasoning behind some of these things, because... Uh, if you had all the vehicles that currently burn gasoline uh, replaced by vehicles that burn even E85, well, suddenly your emissions and stuff are way down, and uh, it wouldn't really, uh, you know, like, drastically affect how people live too much. I mean, obviously, the oil and gas industry is still going to take a bit of a hit, which would be bad for us, but... Oh, that would be very bad for us. But uh, for, for those of you who don't know, that's basically like the economy up here. Yeah. Oh, look at this. I've got four people here already. You need more beds. I need more beds already. And Starlight Drive-In is uh, undergoing a settlement attack. Two. So I guess I better get on it here and build some more beds. I don't think I'm going to make it to Starlight Drive-In, though, because that's quite a long ways away. And I uh, somehow just think that they're going to have to fend for themselves. Oh, well, I'm sure they'll be fine. Yeah, well, they do have, like, a defense rating of 300 and something, like... Quest failed. Defend Starlight Driving. But anyway, maybe some mechanical or mechanic types out there might understand the reason why we aren't all driving E85 vehicles right now. But uh, for, for me, anyways, as a regular schmuck who has a vehicle that is actually rated for that type of fuel, I don't understand why we're not all driving E85 vehicles since is how uh, my truck is like 16 years old. And, uh, you know, like so, so vehicles that are compatible with that type of fuel have been around for quite a while it might have to do <laughs> with uh yields right maybe uh the ethanol process manufacturing process is low yield from crops or something well yeah but that's a, a financial issue right and some of these uh green environmental maniacs uh appear to be ignoring that particular issue when it comes to 
all sorts of things, right? Oh, I don't even mean uh, low <laughs> yield in terms of uh, uh, economics uh, and uh, the price of the fuel or the profitability yeah. of it or anything. I mean low yield, like maybe uh, you just need more land area. Uh, like it, it uses an excessive amount of land area to produce it. That might be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, though, here in the Great White North, what is our population density per square mile? Oh, like, like 1.1 1. 1 like, people. Like two people. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like we're short of land space. It's just that somebody owns all that land and they obviously don't want to use it for, uh, you know, like growing crops that could possibly uh, make alcohol-based fuels, right? Well, and even in the tundra places, I mean, you know, there's still bodies of water up around those areas. You could still build climate-controlled buildings and hey, farm if in you there. Can, if you can grow a high-grade pot at this latitude, where it's seven months of the year it's like freezing cold winter, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could grow crops that you could make uh, alcohol-based fuels out of, too. <laughs> you know, like, that, that kind of logic to me just doesn't fly, right? Oh, well... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, it could just be too, like, uh, what they say, like, most of the Canadian population is within a couple of miles of the U.S. border. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, and, and the rest of the place is empty. Yeah, the rest of the place <laughs> is entirely empty. I think it's probably because most people don't like the cold, right? Like, we're about as far north as most any pop, uh, heavily populated settlement is, right? Sure, you've got, like, the territories, and they've got their capital cities and everything, but it's nowhere near as big as us. Yeah. Totally not saying where we live. Yeah, but uh, to yeah, to totally. But yeah, like there's there's uh, no, no not many places much further north of, of here, and I think that's because uh, uh, lo not a lot of people want to live this far north. I don't know. I've lived in this type of climate just about all my life, and I'm pretty much used to it. Yeah, me too. You know, I, I've, I've never been anywhere else, and I've never noticed a difference, yeah. and I probably never would. In fact, some of the people that we occasionally talk to who live in uh, more southerly climes, who talk about, uh, you know, like 80 and 90 degree weather in the summertime and that kind of thing, I mean, I would literally die if I had to, <laughs> yeah. if I had, if I had to deal with that kind of heat on a daily basis. I would be uh, cuddled up to my air conditioner and I would never move. Dude, I run my fucking air conditioner when it's like 70 outside. So, uh, yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I keep the, the room cooled down to a nice breezy 60, okay? <laughs> I can't deal with more than 60. I, I It's like, what is it, April here? And I'm thinking about setting up my air conditioner soon yeah, enough anyways. Already, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's getting to be uh, what I think it was ten or twelve degrees outside. In, yeah, and in so the, the, in uh, in uh, degrees C. Yeah, and so the snow melted, and uh, uh, that was hot enough for me to want to turn on the air conditioner. Yeah, yeah, there's no snow left here now. I guess we're just cold blooded. Yeah, well, you get used to it, right? I guess uh, I suppose you adapt. To a certain extent, to whatever it is that you're used to. Yep. Because I know uh, there was one guy who was kind of a buddy at work that I used to work with, who, uh, even though it's been many years, his family brought him over from uh, Trinidad, I think it was. Oh, yep. Uh, back when he was around 10 years old. And he still complained bitterly <laughs> about how cold winters are here, right? Even though the guy's like 45 years oh old now. Oh my god. <laughs> well, that kind of reminds me of this uh, uh, funny thing that was going on on the internet a few years back where people were setting up their jeans and leaving them in the out in the snow yeah. where they'd freeze and stand straight up and everybody's making a big deal about it i'm like yeah that'll happen in the cold actually that'll happen when you're wearing <laughs> yeah that'll happen some... when you're like because... like if you stand outside and you're uh uh working outside or if you're even if you're like a, a metropolitan type and you you're like waiting for the bus or waiting for public transit or whatever your your jeans will still freeze yeah. and they'll still angle outwards like that well and you know what else uh like i can remember one winter i was fixing a water main break and it was cold it was like minus 40 which is 
by the way, the same as 40 below Fahrenheit. Yep. And uh, when I got out of the ditch and walked over to the little trailer job shack type thing that we had, uh, and I climbed out of my coveralls, which was kind of difficult, but they were frozen so stiff because when, you, when you're working fixing broken water pipes, like yep. water mains, like a 10 inch diameter water main that's broken well you're you're wet okay yep there's no two ways about it you can wear like rubber boots and and uh, all that kind of stuff but you're still basically you're you're soaking wet from the chest down by the time you're done doing something like that right yep yep and uh but it took me about as long to because it's actually not that cold in the bottom of the ditch because you're below the frost line yep but when you climb up out of the ditch and I walked about, I don't know, 20 yards from where we were working to the sh shack. And by the time I got there, my coveralls were frozen stiff enough that I was able to lean them up against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So yeah, I mean, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess again, it's just like you say, you just get used to it. Yeah, you get used to living in the in the place where you live, right? And I suppose that if I uh, lived in Trinidad, I'd probably, even if I moved there when I was 10 years old, I'd probably still bitterly complain about how uncomfortably hot it was there all the time, Yeah, right? probably. <laughs> oh, God. I've got a... I, 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 I know a guy from uh, down in the, in the southern states, and he's always telling me... Like, every time it's hot outside, it'll be like 110 or whatever, and he'll post that in, in, in this chat room that we got, and it's just like, oh god, why are you posting that? Please yeah. stop. Yeah. Please stop. <laughs> why do you live there? Yeah. <laughs> you just imagine the fire and the brimstone in that area. Yeah, really, yeah. Well, I don't think I need to build any more uh, shelter-type buildings now. I think I've got all that I need. Yeah, I think you actually hit the limit. Well, I doubt that I'm going to get 40 settlers, that's for sure. But now, I guess, we started off with a little bit of a corn crop in this area, so I just kind of added to it. Yep. And then, of course, uh, uh, we got to make some... Look at that, how many carrots I got. Right? Lots of corn, too. Okay, well, looks like maybe we need to grow some more potatoes. Since that seems to be everyone's favorite. <sighs> then we need to find somebody to farm it. Like that gets schmuck. Like that guy. Who's still standing out there in the radioactive area. Yeah, well, you know what? We'll get him to move. Because he'll have to move over here to do his farming thing. Watch, he'll walk right back through the radioactive area first. Probably. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're just going to build a very simple fence. Oh, wow, look at that. We got one of these things sticking up in the air. I must have did, like, uh... Um... Yeah, taking out the Take, lumpy piece of land. Taking out the lumpy piece of land that uh, was underneath it, right? So, uh... I guess you can always jam a concrete post or, or something we'll, we'll, under we'll, it. We'll, we'll, we'll do this. There. Right. There you go. Then we'll maybe straighten it out a little bit. There. It's all the better. The benefits of place it's, anywhere. It's all better now. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have it at the uh, Cambridge Red Rocket. I've got one power pose, like, you know, those those power poles that kind of go along the side of the road. Yep. I got one of those that's sticking up about that far off the ground, too, and I don't know why. But uh, I usually just put a wooden post underneath it. How weird. Just so you don't have it sticking up in the air and looking weird. Anyways, it's time to do a little bit of uh, building of fences. And then we'll be pretty much done with everything we can do for the time being here because I can't actually build any more um, gun turrets or anything like that because I am out of materials. So, 
Not sure which way this gate opens. Let's see? Opens outward. Okay. Looks like it's not hitting the ground or anything though, so it'll be fine. <coughs> Okay, so we may have to change the angle of it a little, though, depending on what this looks like. Looks like we might have to uh, angle it inward here a little bit. Like this. Yep. Kind of like that. Would seem so. Maybe move it over a little. Still opens okay. Still not hitting the ground. Yeah. And uh, we probably have enough room now to put our corner piece in over here now. Okay. Let's yep. just let's just take a peek down here this line here. Okay. Well we might have turned it a little bit too far, maybe. Maybe we'll just do a little bit of this kind of thing here. Position it this way and then... Yep. That's that, that. Well... Okay, how does that look? Not too bad? Okay. You might be able to get it a little bit more exacting, but it depends on how much you want to fiddle with it. Yeah, well, now we've got to redo something here with this gate. Like that. Because we still want our gate to be able to open without clipping into the ground. Oh, look at that. I missed a little bit of stuff there. Okay, then we'll just snap this onto there. And it's kind of up in the air, but we already know the trick for fixing that. Yeah, you just kind of do the thing with the angled pieces, don't you? That's right. We just do the thing with the angled pieces. And then we'll uh, store that one and we'll store that. Oops. Come on, snap on there. almost go with that piece there again, hey? Yep. Well, okay. It'll do. Go. Oh, you had it. No, that piece is a little bit too high for what I want to do here. Uh, okay. I want to go there down to there and then we can maybe still make this work somehow yeah just like that there okay so that makes that work see the end of that to see what it's doing. Okay, that's too high. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of so hard to see through the uh, the brush here. Yeah, because occasionally you get stuff like this that's not scrappable. You know, not too often, but once in a while. Yep. Okay. Well, now we'll do a little bit of this, because you can actually do a little trick here. Just like that. Okay, so you're able to angle the... Well, uh, yeah, because there. this is a curved junk fence piece. Yep, yep. So uh, what we can do is we can more or less follow this uh, 
uh, border, very angular this border along here because uh, they didn't bother to make nice rectangular build areas that are easy to build in. So it is sometimes a bit of a challenge to uh, figure out exactly how you're going to build in some of this stuff, right? Yeah, I guess they couldn't afford survey instruments. <laughs> Okay, we'll have to make use of the place everywhere mod here a little bit, I guess. Okay, maybe we'll see if we can get away with a straight piece here. Yeah. And then we'll probably need that mildly angled piece. <clears throat> okay, so let's see if we can uh, maybe sneak another one of these ones in here too. There, kind of like And now that. you're back in the build area. guess not quite for that piece. <laughs> but the next piece will be. The next piece will be. And like I said, I have no idea if, uh, like, where there might be spawn points. I'm pretty sure there are some out on the beach there since there were super mutants in that area. Yep. But I really don't know. Well, I mean, see, maybe the uh, Chernobyl site is a clue there. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've kind of lost track of where that was. And, uh, you know, like, my original plan seems to have fallen by the wayside here. I, th I, I think I still remember where it was. It was uh, further to the right over yeah. here. I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably just going to fence this right down to the waterline, like this. And, uh... Yeah. Kind of, sort of like that, yep. I guess. And, uh, you know, once we got enough gun towers to put on top of things and gun, like, gun turrets to put on top of things and stuff like that, well, then I think we'll be, uh, just doing just fine. Yeah, there you go. You really, found it. Yeah, I found it. It's about and, where and this, this moron. Yeah, it's about where this guy's standing. <laughs> hey, yeah. buddy, you're glowing a little uh, bit. You might want to move a couple steps to the side. Yeah. Well, maybe what we'll do is we'll <laughs> we'll give him a a guard post just to to uh, guard here. Right. We'll. Uh, We'll, we'll just give him a guard post to guard right up here. And uh, we'll also give the other guy a guard post, too. Because I think we got two guys left here that don't have jobs, right? Yo, they seem to love standing in that radioactive area, too. Yeah, it's funny. There must be uh, something there that I can't see, like some buried uh, disposal barrels or something like that, right? Yep. But anyway, that will give us a couple of guard posts... And uh, we got power going on here, and then down to here, and maybe we'll uh, work on getting a little bit of power. From here.
These big ass power pylons. Yep. Oh, now I'm gonna have to move my water fountain. Yeah, just throw it on the outside. Yeah. There you go. We'll throw it on the outside, just uh, right. It's a tall water fountain. Oh, you know what? We'll just put it over here. There. We'll just move all that plumbing just like that. It's modular plumbing. Yeah. under there. Might have to move it down a little. It might fit if you use a, a down piece. Yeah. And then you can have the world's shortest wire connecting to your terminal. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, here we go. Of course, for some reason, even if you assign two guys to defense, it will only assign one. Then you'll have to. Uh... So then you got to go back in and you got to assign the last guy. There always seems to be like if you have three, and you tell it to assign three, it'll only assign two. Yeah, it's like an off and, by one bug. Yeah, it's an off by one bug or something, right? But now we look at the vocational overview. We've got two farmers and two guards. So we're good to go. And that will help our defense since for some reason we can't seem to build very many gun turrets right now. Okay, so there we go. We've got all of the accommodations that we'll need, and now as this place grows, we just need to come back once in a while, put more crops in, build more defenses, and it's uh, pretty much a done deal. I mean, we could add some nice little touches like... Uh... <clears throat> like uh, filling in that area on the beach with concrete. Oh yeah, we could also put some more water in here too. Wow, look at this, eh? <laughs> I think you just need to wall off that whole area. Yeah. Well, maybe what we'll do is we'll put our water in over here instead. <laughs> I can't build a big one, I can only build a small one. Oil, that's what the issue is, I'm short of oil. See, don't you wish you had more now? Yep, you can never have too much oil, people. Gotta love your oil and gas. It's what our civilization is built on. Yep. Like it or not. Especially out here where we listen to both kinds of music, country and western. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Anyway, I guess we'll maybe... Uh, I know what we'll do. We'll be, we'll be fancy about that song. We're running a low on uh, certain, um, like copper, copper as well. Now, see, I went and I bought all the aluminum that I could lay my hands on in the Commonwealth. Right? Yeah. I visited every uh, settlement that I could reasonably get too closely, and I bought every TV dinner tray and aluminum can and. And I even went and visited Arturo in Diamond City and bought his shipment of aluminum. And now you're running out and of... And now I'm uh, running out of other things instead. Yep. So, yeah. Copper and oil now are the things I'm running low on. However, this place does have four people. We've got four beds. We've got 28 defense. We've got food and water. 
and the happiness is a little bit like I, I thought I was going to be in danger of losing this settlement because of the low happiness. Yeah. Which is why I felt that this place needed a little attention. So there you go. In uh, about 20 minutes, you can... Oh, I guess I didn't quite finish. <laughs> <clears throat> in about 20 minutes plus, you can, uh, you know, like, do something with uh, Dalton Farm as far as settlement building goes. I guess we should probably finish building this fence. Yeah, now you gotta go back up because there's a little ditch there, huh? Yep. But that's okay. These these things are very well suited toward that kind of stuff, so you know. I actually like the chain link fencing thing quite a bit. It's one of my favorite mods. Well it makes it a lot easier to to work with the weird ass contours of some of these settlements. Well the thing is too is that I really uh do like building settlements. I know I haven't done that much of it in this series up until this point. Yep. But that is actually one of my favorite things to do. I'll spend hours and hours and hours. Okay, sure. I'll put it like that. <laughs> I'll spend hours and hours and hours building settlements and stuff like that, right? Yep. Like, it's one of my favorite things to do. So there we go. Now we have a walled-off settlement. And you'll come back and fix the Chernobyl problem next time. Wow, look at all that stuff that I missed. Piles of leaves. The trash and debris. I should have no shortage of uh, wood anyway after scrapping all of this trash and debris that's been out here. So anyway, we had to put in a little bit of a separate power generator for this water purifier because I didn't have enough stuff left to make any more pylons. <laughs> But well, it'll have to okay. do. It'll have to do for now. So now we need to decide what we're going to do. So blood tie. Oh yeah, right. We haven't quite finished all of Cassie Dalton's jobs yet. Yeah, we gotta go kill that guy. We gotta go kill that guy way over here on the opposite end of the island, by the looks of it. So I guess we better get cracking. Oh, okay, now we got a settlement attack going on at Green Top Nursery as well. Uh oh. Huh! Hey there, buddy! Good thing that gun has a big mag. Yeah. And look at that, you even got yourself an autosave. Yeah. Hmm. I can't, I can't loot that brush pile, but, or that ash pile. See, I got you talking about brush, and now you're all fucked up. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, I like this gun, actually. It's got fairly, like, uh, it's a semi-automatic, but it, you can notice that the fire rate is pretty good, right? Yep. Like it'll, it'll fire pretty much as fast as I can pull the trigger. And, uh... You know, it has a bit of a slow projectile speed, kind of like a plasma gun. Yep. But uh, it does a lot of damage. It's pretty good for close range engagements, right? Oh yes, you'll also notice that old Longfellow isn't with me anymore. I dismissed him back to Longfellow's cabin there. Oh, you got his perk? I got his perk. While uh, while uh, we were in the Commonwealth actually doing off-camera, off-behind-the-scenes things that I discussed earlier, uh, we had the, uh, the the talk, you know, where he told me that I was worth, worth actually teaching something to and all that kind of stuff. And uh, then he, I got his perk, and I think it's like a, a pretty good one, too. I get, uh, I get for this. Uh, I can even remember what it was called now, but I think it basically I ignore twenty five percent of armor for animals and and uh, bugs or something. 
which is definitely worth it. If only you could find it. Well, if I could remember what it was called now, right? Ah, oh, well. Uh, Hunter's Wisdom. There we go. So, the damage resistance and energy resistance of animals and sea creatures is reduced by 25%. So that is an actual tangible benefit, right? Yep. Especially because some of the bigger, nastier... Uh, um, Mirelurk type creatures in this place are like bigger and nastier, right? Yep. <clears throat> so being able to do a little more damage to them is kind of a good thing. I think I was gonna was it here I was gonna stop no it was uh that the red rocket that I was gonna stop yep we gotta go a bit uh, further south yet <sighs> yeah I was gonna stop there and just see if I can outfit another provisioner to uh, connect up with Dalton farm there especially if you've uh, got another settler down there yet yeah well it looks like a couple more have joined since I was last there And you'd be surprised at how well a couple, half a dozen or so uh, provisioners that are well armed can keep the peace. Yeah, well, they all work together, right? Yeah. And I guess uh, bullets are bullets, even if their guns are kind of crap sometimes. Well, the thing is, though, that guy was armed with a. I think I gave him that two shot th uh, bolt action shotgun, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's pretty well armed then, yeah. in spite of appearances. Yeah. So let's see how many uh, unemployed settlers we have here. Ooh, almost everybody. Okay. I guess find someone yeah. and uh, give them a job. Yeah, find someone. The and Central give them Planning a job. Committee assigns you a job. Okay, I should be able to build crafting stations here now, I think, because I did get a bunch of aluminum. Needs copper. <laughs> oh, don't need any copper to build an armor workbench, so we'll build one of those here. And we can build a chemistry station. And we can build a weapons workbench. Nice. There. So now we're all set. So we need to make a provisioner's uniform. See, you even need aluminum to make police hats. Oh, for the little badge? Thing. For the little badge on the front, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I wonder what kind of weapons I have stored in the workbench here. Nothing. So what kind of weapons do I have on me? Probably nothing extra, because I think I've already pretty much... Yeah, okay, i got a handmate. What's this? Oh, look! You can make uh, wrench weapons. Huh, that looks like a pretty damaging weapon, too, for a 5 8 wrench. Because uh, a 5 8 wrench is actually only just a uh, middle-sized wrench, eight. Yep, yep. If I wanted to hit somebody with something, I think I'd probably choose something closer to a one-inch wrench. <laughs> <laughs> because a five-eighths wrench is, uh, I don't know, maybe six or eight inches long, and it, yep. weighs, and it weighs a few ounces. Yep. Like, I don't think I'd want to try and hit somebody hey, with it. I just wanted Unless all I wanted to do was make we them mad. <laughs> Even a, even a one-inch wrench might be a little bit on the light to... side for that. You might want to go up to something like uh inch and a quarter or maybe inch and five sixteenths or something, right? Yep, yep. Then you're starting to get into something that's uh, fairly hefty. Now, that guy's already got a, the bestest powerful pipe pistol that there is. Okay. Just looking to trade a little. Sure. Yeah. 
Oh, there you go. He'll make a fine provisioner. That's right. Okay, Dalton Farm. There. But I guess maybe whoever uh, designed that particular weapon idea obviously has never actually had occasion to hit someone with a wrench. Or use one. <laughs> or use one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually have never hit someone with a wrench either, but uh, I have used them. And... Uh, yeah, well, that used to be a really big part of what you used to do, ain't it? Yeah. That's why I say if I if I was mad enough that I wanted to hit somebody with a wrench, I think I'd probably choose one of the... Not one of the ones you'd find in a toolbox drawer. I'd pick one that hangs on a peg on the wall. Yeah. You know, like an inch and a quarter or an inch and five sixteenths or inch and inch and a half or something like that. Like something that's, uh, I don't know, like 14 or so inches long and maybe weighs the better part of a pound. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, 5 eighths wrench is a little bit small to use as a weapon. Ah, well, you know, computer programmers and all, right? Yeah. Yeah, actually, the, the keyboard for your computer would probably be a more effective, heftier <laughs> weapon than a 5 eighths wrench, actually. Although it might break if you were to hit someone <laughs> with it. I'm pretty sure all the keys would pop off after the first hit. Yeah, probably. Of course, you could do like that Swedish guy that you used to watch every now and then, where uh, through clever use of a couple of uh, they look he it looked like he had around one inch wrenches there. Yep. And uh, through clever use of a short length of chain, he was actually able to turn two wrenches and a piece of chain into a set of nunchucks. Yeah. Well, he he uh, <laughs> uh, is the guy. He, he's from Sweden, but he lives in Canada, and uh, he was making fun of the weapon laws here because it's like you know this. These two wrenches, uh, when not attached by a chain, they're perfectly legal items to have. But if you attach them by a chain, they become illegal nunchucks. Yeah. I can't find that video anymore. I think it actually got taken down. Yeah, possibly. Maybe maybe uh, our uh, nanny state government didn't want people knowing how to make nunchucks out of a pair of wrenches. Well, yeah, and he actually connected <laughs> them together with a carabiner. So he, he, like, detaches the carabiner, he goes, legal item, and then he attaches the carabiner, he goes, illegal item. Yeah, and he does that. He repeats that. <laughs> yeah. He repeats that several times while while demonstrating, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, it was actually quite funny. That's why I remembered it. Yeah, it, made, for those it, of, it made me laugh. <laughs> for those of you who wonder who we're talking about, I think his name is Skalagrim, and he does, like, the medieval sword thing. Yeah. And a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I actually uh, even learned a little bit about how people actually use swords for real, too. And they didn't use them the way they do in the movies. Yeah, I, I, I just remember that that uh, uh, wrench nunchuck video. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah, it was, actually. Yeah, and then he's going through the hardware store, and he's like, Oh, you could hurt somebody pretty bad with this. Picks up, like, a hammer. Well, he picks up a blacksmith hammer, right? Yep, yep. Which is about the same height, size and heft of, you know, like, say, uh, a mace that a medieval knight might have yep. carried, right? Yep. You know, it's on a sturdy wooden handle that's about a little, probably, uh, I don't know, 12 or 14 inches long, and it's got about a pound and a half or two pound head with a wedge back on it. Yep. That would work quite nicely for punching holes <laughs> in steel armor, probably. <laughs> Or for, for, you know, like, severely harming an, unarm an unarmored person, right? Yeah. Well, but but and you can buy all of those in the hardware store that you want, but, uh, yeah, you can't have nunchucks. Yep. <laughs> which actually require probably more skill to harm someone with than the hammer does. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> because any idiot can swing a hammer, probably, and, and hurt someone with it, but... The nunchucks, you, you're probably going to hurt yourself with them too, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. If you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Personally, if I had to choose a uh, uh, makeshift weapon, I think I'd rather have the hammer myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot simpler to use, anyways. <laughs> anyway, we've been getting distracted a lot here while we're uh, playing the game here, and doing a bunch of uh, silly chatting and that kind of thing. 
What do you think? Should we focus more on the gameplay now? Be a, yeah, we've kind of got to... Be more serious about our gaming? We're, we're running out of time to run down there and kill that guy. Oh, okay. Because we, <laughs> we've been busy wasting all of this time. Yeah, chatting about hammers and nunchucks and oil and all this other crap. Yeah, well... What can you do? I'm in one of those funny moods today where, uh, you know, like... The irony of some of these things is not lost on me, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if that's enough to give everybody jobs, but we'll see. Well, you'll give some people jobs. Because, to me, even 4% unemployment's not good enough. We need to have full employment, okay? Huh? Only full employment is good enough. Okay, it looks like I need to build another guard post. Well, that's okay. You'll have to go back in there and reassign the last settler anyways. Yeah, that's true. So that's fine. We'll put one right here. Yeah, we'll have to do that twice as well. Find jobs for the unemployed. Assigned to defense. Two. That means two. Okay. Not one. See, we go into vocational overview now, and there's still one unemployed. <laughs> so we get to do that again. And we'll assign him to defense. One. Okay. There we go. You're good. Everybody has a job. Now we'll just grab a quick nap here, because it looks like nighttime came again while we were busy doing all of this stuff. Yep. Well, I failed to help Starlight drive in. See, I told you it was going to be a failure. Yeah, well, what can you do? There must have been a small army attacking them then in order to be able to damage the place to do even with their defenses. The Brotherhood of Steel showed up full force. Yeah. Pridwin and all. Yes, on another topic, I started watching the Fallout TV show last night. Oh, yeah? Yes, it was quite good, actually. I liked it. Nice. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit different, but basically it was just uh, good fun with monsters and, uh, and violence and all that kind of stuff. Their take on ghouls seems to be a bit different in that... Uh, Apparently there's a drug that they take to stop them from going insane or something. Ah. Uh, yeah, but then that's something that I didn't see in the uh, in the lore anywhere that I can remember, but I uh, guess that doesn't mean that it's not really a thing. How come I got so many quest markers again here? You have more settlement defense crap. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, fuck those guys. They can defend <laughs> themselves. I'm too far away to do anything about it anyway. I need to find a road or something. Maybe I'll just go this way. Rock climbing. Yeah. Because the roads in this place are so damn hard to find that... Uh, I well, could... Especially with the fog. Yeah. Oh, here we are at the water. Is this the road? This is the road. Here we go. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. I just found the road. Okay, and it's even the right road. And the right direction. Yeah, so if I follow this road for a really long ways down here... Eventually, I'll get to this place. Well, I guess you better get sprinting. Yeah, except that it's hard to sprint in here, too, because the road's so broken up. Every now and then, you have to stop and search around to find it again and stuff like that. Yeah, just head south. Oh, or you could end up running into the middle of a pack of vicious wolves. It's fine. They were just as surprised as you are. Yeah. They can't see shit either. Actually, you know what? I should switch to a weapon with a little bit... If I have to shoot things that are like that, that are basically pests, I shouldn't be using one of my best weapons on them. Um, maybe we'll use this. I bought Wastelander's Friend while I was in uh, uh, the Commonwealth, too. Because I was looking at my Gunslinger perks, and I'm nearly up there, but in here it says that you may have a chance to cripple a limb. 
of you get level five gunslinger. Yep. And Wastelander's friend has that uh, legendary where you do extra limb damage as well. So you know they failed too, right? Yep. I went back there and I ran around and I like defended about three different settlements. And now all of a sudden everybody wants me to show up and defend them. They aren't able to do it themselves, eh? In spite of all the defenses you build. In spite of all the defenses I build. So, anyway. You could have like 2,000 defense and it still wouldn't be enough. Okay, what's going on up here? Okay, we got... Well. Might be a little bit long range for that too. Ah, oh, that's okay. He can't see what the hell you're doing anyways. Oh, there's another one over there. See, these guys don't see shit. They're just shooting out into the fog for no reason. Well, I guess not no reason. I mean, I guess you are shooting them, but... Uh... Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> Boom! Oh, wow, something blew up over there, too. <laughs> I guess there was a car or something. Yeah. Shouldn't have stepped out from under that tree, buddy. Oh, there's another one. Oh! Wow, he survived that! Yep. Legendary enemy. I, I wonder if he's like completely and totally crippled after that. He's obviously covered well enough that uh, I can't hit him. Okay. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's one way to drive them out of cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drop a grenade in there. That'll make them draw, bolt pretty quickly. Yep. Quick draw switchblade. Oh, wow, that's a useful weapon, hey? have to stay I I considered hanging up the punt gun for a while and giving something else a chance but I'm kind of glad that I didn't yeah well, you'd miss out on all this fun yeah with the bodies flying everywhere and you know it's just it's just too much fun I like the punt gun must have been all these cars or something that were blowing up around here it also sounds like something is uh, stuck and having a physics problem over there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that skeleton in that cage there. Rattling away. Okay, well, I don't think there's anything really to loot in here, so I guess we'll just be on our way. He's just letting you know he's there. Uh-oh. How lucky for me that you decided to announce your presence. Yeah, really. Yeah, look at that. I even killed that guy from way over there on top of that bridge. Did you see that? Yep. Wow. Oh, somebody's, oh. Somebody has a minigun. Yeah, there are bullets coming from somewhere. Yeah, he's too far away, though. Even with the reduced spread, he's far enough away that uh, none of those bullets could actually hit me. Yeah, none of them came even close. Right, he was at extreme range for a uh, minigun. Yep. So this is obviously a uh, location of some sort. We'll pale Not anymore. Uh oh 
Where is he? I don't know. If you fire, you'll probably hit him. Uh, well, no, I've got something here with a uh, recon scope on it. And, uh, actually, it's Wastelander's friend. So this is one of the things that a recon scope is very useful for. Is that if I can pass the scope across him anywhere, then a nice little red diamond will appear over him just like that. So now I don't really have to worry about hitting him. I just have to aim at the red diamond. Ah. <laughs> and then that will be it for him. Okay, well, I'm not going to get in there and, and uh, really get too involved with what's going on in there because I am really have other things to do. But Okay. Because no doubt I'll end up going there at some point anyway. But, uh, because this looks like it's a major encounter area. The Harbor something or other hotel. The What's It's Nuts Hotel. Yeah, did it actually mark it on the map here? Yep. Yeah. Harbor Grand Hotel, yeah. Okay. Who's that? Let's play. Let oh, come another out. one of these guys, okay. Hmm. Okay, where are you? Are they up top? Yeah, they might be up top or something, right? That might be why he's not already in my face, because uh, the Nightkin are... Scream! Oh, there you are. Scream for mercy! Yeah. I think he's needs something a little punchier. Yeah, let's, uh, let's deal with the problem the right way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll just cut him up into little pieces. There. Gotta love the, the harvester still. That's a good weapon. Yeah, now you got to go west for some ways before you turn south again. Yeah, I think the road kind of winds back and forth a little bit here. Yeah. Oh, look, we're going to come up on another red rocket here right away. Nice. Right there, as a matter of fact. There's the workbench. Yeah, there's the workbench. We'll scrap one or two things here. There. Now we have an active workbench, so at some point we can uh, maybe send uh, a provisioner down that way. And get another settlement. Because that's one thing I think that the vanilla... Uh, DLC areas, both Har Far Harbor and Nuka World, were both lacking. Is it would have been nice if they'd have put a few more settlements in, right? Well, especially given how big the area is. Yeah, because I think in Far Harbor, I think all you get is like four vanilla settlements, something like that, right? You get Dalton Farm, and then somewhere in this area here, there's another one, and then there's one over here, kind of, and then. Uh, uh, of course, uh, um, Longfellow's Cabin, right? Yep, yep. So I think you only get like four settlements or something vanilla. It looks like there's no road connecting across there, so I'm going to have to... Uh, You're going to have to swim it. I'm going to have to swim it. Trapper there. <laughs> now 
we just have to find some way up this bank. Here we go. Okay, where are we at now? Okay, so I guess we're... Oh, okay, we must be on a road. Yep. So I guess we follow the road and take a right once the road actually gets to that point. I guess this will be the right. Uh-oh, what was that? Thing that wants to kill you somewhere. Was it more on your right? Hmm. No, I don't know. It's the fog. Oh, okay. There's a trapper hiding in the bush somewhere. Oh, well. Yeah, you're only around to kill one specific trapper. The rest aren't your problem. Well, I'm not going to spend a lot of time searching for him since I'm trying to actually get somewhere specific, right? Just be like, not in my job description. You hired me to kill a specific guy, not not everybody. Just this one guy. Okay, well, we must be getting close now. Did it spit something at me? Yep, and it went right over your head. Oh. So it missed. Uh-oh. Now what? Oh, okay. I hear shooting. Yeah, it sounds like there's a firefight up ahead. Okay, well, we need to have a drink of water now. Yes, I refilled my water supply, too. Were they shooting at that thing? Rad chicken. Rad chicken? Rad chicken. Oh, okay. Look, it. we just came across all these guys in the fog. Yep, now they're shooting at you. On your left there. Another oh, two on your right too. Yeah. Damn, why don't they make uh, pistols with 100 round drum mags? And why you know is what? that... Yeah, why, why is, is that... that... Why is that stump even a sheltered thing? Like, really? Why is it so large, but he could shoot through it? Yeah. random person running at you with a chainsaw. That's really when you start running backwards with your uh, firearm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some mystery meat surprise for the healing. Yo, you actually uh, got a little beat up there. Yeah, nothing too serious though. Like I said, I'm I'm heavily enough armored now that uh, it's pretty hard to hurt me. Yeah, it was mostly just the volume of guys. Yeah, it's just like this massive army of guys. I guess this is why it's the right place or close enough to the right place. Yeah. Also, I do have uh, one level of uh, uh, Lone Wanderer, which reduces damage by a fairly substantial amount. 
because I prefer to work alone. And the only time I really ever bother with a uh, a companion is if I need them for a specific storyline or uh, uh, if I want to get their perk and I don't have some cheaty way to get it without having to have them with me. Yep. <laughs> well, because they get you killed. Yep. Yeah, I don't think you've died in a long time now. No, not since that super mutant uh, encounter. I think it was in the... Uh, Spaghetti factory. Yeah, or... Gwinnett Brewery yeah, or yeah, something. The, the yeah, the Gwinnett Brewery, yeah. That's where it was. Nope, you can't loot him. Yeah, oh, yeah, you, there you go. Cavalier's Ripper. Take. Oh, look, I've actually found a randomly generated uh, legendary Ripper. In nice. All, you know how rare that is? In all the years that I've played this game, I think this just might be the first time. Really? Yeah. Of course, taking 15% less damage while blocking or sprinting, well... You that know, doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's not really a thing, I don't think, but... You know, personally, I would have rather had something like this that does the stagger effect or like some of the custom ones that I built, right? Where uh, they actually, uh, like the custom one I built was sort of like the, a furious weapon. Yep. That uh, the more hits that you uh, rat, rat, rapidly land, the more damage it does. Yep, yep. Which is actually a pretty good one for a Ripper because of the high rate of attack, right? Yep. Is there anybody? Yeah, there is somebody else around here somewhere. Where are you? Oh, there's a gun turret around here somewhere, too. Okay. Looks like I have to go up in the... Uh... Oh, look. Your power armor frame. Workbenches and things like that. And aluminum cans. Yeah. See, n this is the part of the island where all the aluminum sits. Looks like I've kind of circled around here a bit. We'll pick up the ceramic stuff because that's actually good for building uh, uh, power connectors. Like the little stubby ones, you know, yep, that you can yep. put on walls and, and ceilings and stuff. You need, you need uh, ceramics in order to make those. Well, imagine being able to turn a dinner plate into a uh, power yeah. connector. Yeah. Well, it's just like being able to build a 10-foot section of shack wall out of a couple of tin cans and a, and a you know, like, wooden broom or something, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> that was one thing I liked in the, in the TV show, actually, is that they didn't stretch reality like that as far as, uh, you know, like, settlement and that kind of thing went. Like, the settlements that they had in there definitely looked like they'd been pieced together out of, uh, you know, like, scraps and junks and stuff, but it wasn't, like, uh, you know, to the level where you could build things out of things that you would not imagine you could possibly use as building materials, right? Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, you just got to get your torch out and weld those aluminum cans together. Yeah. It's good stuff anyway. I think that any uh, Fallout series fan, uh, you know, like, will will enjoy watching that show. I know I have so far. I watched four episodes of it last night, so... <laughs> <laughs> How many episodes are there out now? Eight. 
that, okay. that basically it's one of those limited series things where they have like seven or eight episodes a season. Yep. So I'm about halfway through, and then that'll be it for Fallout for another three years, right? Until they come out with season two. <laughs> yeah, don't you hate that? Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? The, with these uh, streaming service productions is they, they make some really good stuff. But it always takes such a long but time. But it takes forever to produce, right? Yep. Although you can see why, because I can honestly tell you that uh, definitely the Fallout TV show has, you know, like uh, movie movie level production and that kind of thing. Yep. You know, like even the they did a hell of a good job of the uh, power armors and stuff like that, right? Like the 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 uh, Brotherhood of Steel guys in the in the T sixty power armors, well. They look just like the, they would in this game, wearing a set of T-60 power armor, right? Nice. And very natural looking movement and stuff like that, too. This is a pretty big house. What's left of it. Okay, well, it's time to go after the last guys here. And I think they're in that uh, lighthouse. Oh yeah, I seem to remember her talking about a lighthouse. Oh. Oh, okay, so it's flamer time now. Yeah, we're going to try this out again here. I actually like this. This is a pretty good weapon. How do I get in that lighthouse? Do I have to go through this building somehow? Looks like it. Oh, careful, oil on the floor. Oh, okay, no problem. Yeah, not a good idea to use a flamer when you're standing on a floor covered in oil. Why not? Because you'd ignite! <laughs> I'm not really trying to hide. I'm barging up the stairs here. With a fucking flamer. With a fucking flamer. Yeah. Okay. So. And I'm going to stop and have a drink of water on the way, too. Yeah, I'm going to listen to your radio oh, while oh, I drink they're this. Listening, they're listening to Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the modded radio stations that I have. Yep. I'm not sure whether we'll get a copyright notice because of that or not. Or maybe it's not, uh, like, oh... Uh, you know, like it, maybe it, it's not easy enough to hear the rate a uh, copyright notice. I don't know. Problem solved. Yeah, I made pretty short work of him, didn't I? But now you can't get past this little railing. See, now you just found out a way to shoot around railings. Yeah, Douglas's key. Mysterious hollow tape. Okay, we'll take the mysterious hollow tape. What does the mysterious hollow tape say? Well, that settles it. I am one set screw. Damn this fog. You think a lighthouse would be easy to find, but not in this. Never seen fog like it. Okay, I guess that must have been the last guy that got sent after Douglas. Yeah, I guess he got eaten. Yeah. Oh, Islander's Almanac. You have a 5% higher chance in vats against animals you are in combat with. Okay. So I found two of the Islander's Almanacs now. 
well, it'll build up in usefulness. Douglas's note. Caught some of my boys trying to steal some of the loot we took off that trader. Had to put a bullet in them to show the others just in the leg for now. Put all the stuff in a trunk. Dropped it in one of the fishing nets. I'll hang on to the key. Okay. But I guess that's a hint. There's probably some loot somewhere around here. I wonder if it has to do with uh, this. Oh, okay. I guess I'm supposed to be on the boat. Yep. Oh, oh. what's going on? Now I'm being shot at. By a guy. We'll just commit another war crime here. Hey, it's fine, man. Perfectly fine. See, this one also has that limb crippling thing, like a uh, uh, kneecapper. So this is a kneecapping flamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, God. and that's what... Oh, now what? Oh. Another guy. You see that? Now he's crippled too, right? Yep. So, so he can't even get out of the way. So he can't even get out of the way. He can't move. That being said, I'm almost out of fuel for this thing, so I may have to... Uh, uh, sideline the the flamer as now. much fun as it is as much fun as it is oh oh dead rad rabbit okay And actually, in the uh, in the Fallout show, you know the assault rifle, like the big bulky, uh, water cooled, uh, light machine gun that they call an assault rifle yep, in this yep, game. Yep. That's what the Brotherhood of Steel fully armored guys in T60s carry, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. And they look just like they do in the game too. Okay, so I'm assuming that he must have meant out here somewhere, maybe? That he hid some kind of treasure or something? Other side, maybe? Maybe. I'll have a look over here. Or it might say in the note. I don't know. No, it didn't say in the note. Something, said, something fishing in, nets. In the fish... There. In this fishing net, probably. Right? Oh, there's a Mr. Gutsy. Lights don't really help underwater very much, do they? That fishing net? Right there? This fishing net? Yeah, oh, right yeah, there. There you go. There we go. Okay, well, it had some pretty typical uh, loot-type stuff in it. Well, anyway, we've been having fun here, but we must be well over our usual allotted time. Actually, we're only coming up to an hour and a half, so you managed to do it in time. Okay, well, anyway, I guess we should probably call it an episode for now. And uh, I'll probably make the long trip back to Cassie Dalton off-camera, maybe, and... Uh, Maybe not, though. And I guess we'll decide that next time. Alrighty. Until then. I'm Rec V5. And I am Sandman99. Have a good one.